Hey my fellow friends, this is Chris from Shughead Gaming and here's my review for Wraith the Oblivion Afterlife, developed and published by Fast Travel Games. Wraith the Oblivion Afterlife releases April 22nd, 2021 for the Oculus Quest and Rift S, which includes cross-buy, with a Steam VR release set for May 25th, 2021 and a PSVR release date at a later date. Prices listed at $30 USD, but of course, that depends on your region. Based on a tabletop RPG, Wraith the Oblivion Afterlife sees you take on the role of a Wraith, one of the restless undead. Roaming the Barkley Mansion and supernatural powers at your disposal, you seek to solve the mystery surrounding your death before hostile spirits destroy what remains of you. Set in the shared universe World of Darkness, this cult classic board game turned VR horror looks to be the next big creep fest in VR. Stick with me while I tear it down and see if it delivers the scares. As always guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It not only helps out the channel, but VR gaming as a whole. And if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing. And for video updates, you guys know the deal. Hit that bell icon. And one last thing, I have another channel with Ryan from the VR Grid. We call it the Virtual Boys Podcast. And if you're looking for real conversations about the things that matter to VR gamers, please consider checking that out. The link is in the notes below. Let's kick things off with a look at graphics. Visually, Wraith is a rather dull and dreary world, and likely intentionally so, as you seem to exist in a kind of shadow world of the living. With its washed-out colors and shadow-drenched rooms, Wraith on the Quest 2 is impressive in the headset, for both the color palette and the ability to play with darkness allows fast travel games to slickly hide the visual shortcomings of the lower-powered hardware. Case in point, the game is in fact using some foveated rendering techniques to gradually load in texture detail, but due to the washed-out look of the game, you really need to be paying attention to even notice. Likely designed as a quest game first and then scaled up for PC, the PC version looks much the same, with only really a sharper look and an increase in texture detail being the real enhancements. An amazing accomplishment on the Quest 2 hardware, but a little disappointing for those with a gaming PC hoping for something really impressive. Regardless though, Barkley Mansion looks and feels believable, and despite some slight shimmer here and there on the Quest side of things, it looks really sharp, and actually stands as one of the better looking Quest games to date. Unfortunately, despite the mansion itself coming off well in the headset, I couldn't help but feel like the game was lacking something in the atmosphere department. There's a rather bland use of lighting and particle effects, which leaves much of the game simply feeling static and a little samey, something which definitely stood out for a horror game, a feeling that is magnified by the singular game location of the mansion for which, while large, still entails a lot of back and forth travel through familiar areas. Points in the game where you're required to use your flashlight fare better in creating a different feel to the proceedings, but they don't really show up until the second half of the game and suffer at times from just being too dark, despite the use of that flashlight. As for the evil spirits you come across, they're cool looking and certainly bump up the game's creep factor, but they do suffer from some rather wooden animations and a few hit detection issues. All in all, visually Wraith looks incredibly polished regardless of which platform you play on. However, the mansion just seems to lack much in the way of personality and atmosphere, which seems like a bit of a missed opportunity considering how much it succeeds otherwise. Sound is up next. This isn't your typical thing, Ed, but ooh, it's going to be worth it. Look, the old man is a bit nuts. And he might say stuff that you know, makes no sense to you, but we're going to do this, and then we're leaving. Something I find myself saying a lot these days in my game reviews is how an excellent sound mix has elevated a game in a way which its visuals could not. Now, Wraith is certainly no visual slouch, but the sound mix here is certainly first rate and does make up somewhat from the game's lack of visual atmosphere by providing a rich, detailed, and creepy component where the visuals couldn't. Now, this might come across as an oxymoron of sorts, but the sound mix in Wraith often feels, well, empty. Something which seems very intentional, as you are essentially existing in a state that is detached from the real world, walking through an empty house filled now with only the dead. 
The resulting effect is many moments in the game where, besides a slight presence of the soundtrack and the almost hum of the house itself, you are left with nothing but the sound of your footsteps and creaks of the floorboards underneath them. That being said, it's not always like this, and when the game wants you to jump or feel something, it knows how to ramp up the intensity, filling the mix with its soundtrack and sounds of the mansion's deadly inhabitants, which are sure to make your skin crawl. This expertly crafted mix is also aided by a nicely delivered sense of 3D audio that not only aids in the creep factor, but also assisted greatly with knowing where to go, as the creak of an opening door to a new area was easily located by simply listening. Where the game falters slightly in the sound mix was in the voice acting. It was never cringeworthy, but instead of being pulled into the narrative further by the performances, I was often taken out by some weak dialogue, subpar acting, and most noticeably voices that just didn't seem to match the character at all, either coming off as the wrong ethnicity or just younger than the on-screen character. And as a game that relies so heavily on said narrative to keep you engaged in the story moving forward, the voice acting certainly hurts the effectiveness of the whole game. And that brings us to gameplay. Now I'm sure you have figured out by now that Wraith the Oblivion Afterlife is a thriller slash horror game that is strongly narrative based, but what I wanted to know going in was if this was going to be simply another creepy walking simulator where I read story clues and got jump scared, or was there some actual gameplay depth here? The answer is, well, it's both. At its core, Wraith is not only a ghost story but a murder mystery, a whodunit if you will, as you try to solve your own murder. And it is this mystery that fuels the game forward as you accomplish the linear quest strip, of which are mainly fetch quests. Now, this may sound a little wanting, and at times it can be, but the story is interesting enough and the mansion fascinating enough in VR to keep me engaged. Additionally, the game gives you the ability to sense objective points, using your arm as an almost ectometer, which pulses and glows when you're pointing in the right direction, both horizontally and vertically. A gameplay mechanic I really appreciated as it mitigated much confusion of where to go without simply giving it away with a navigation arrow and breaking the immersion. Keeping things fresh, the game does begin to hand out a few pieces of equipment and spectral abilities over the first half of the 6-8 to eight hour campaign that will assist you in the objectives ahead. A camera, your first item, reveals spectral rifts and reveals more story details and prior occurrences in the house. A camera flashes up next and functions as a flashlight, followed by a tape recorder that will gain you access to certain locked areas. Additionally, you're given something called Arkanoi abilities, such as the ability to walk through walls that select shadow doors, and finally the power to move certain objects, both of which, in addition to your flashlight, are powered by something called Pathos, which is an emotional energy that the Wraith is able to draw from their passions. This can run out though and is recharged at either save points or by picking up certain scattered photographs. Additionally, other photographs are used to recharge your corpus, essentially your health. Now, of course, you're dead, so you can't really die again, but instead must maintain your corpus, which measures your ability to maintain your physical integrity in the physical world. And this is where the sinister spirit inhabitants of the house come into play, for while the game often plays out as a mystery novel, it also loves to scare, often resulting in encounters that play out as a stressful game of hide-and-seek and stealth. These parts are definitely regular enough to satisfy the horror fans, but they aren't indicative of the whole experience as the game often hints at these encounters rather than opting for jump scares. Not a huge stealth gamer as I lack the patience in games where I can't defend myself, these sections, while creepy, could become slightly tedious as being discovered is a hard thing to avoid in early attempts and the game's fixed save points can be few and far between, resulting in me often making the trek across the house to a save point rather than risk repeating a lengthy piece of the game multiple times. Something which is sure to grade a bit, as the game inherently contains a fair bit of back and forth travel between parts of the house. Fortunately, fast travel games, now in their third VR game, know how to do movement mechanics, and it shows, as walking around the house, opening doors, and using the game's simple inventory system was easy, and not the chore many VR games tend to be. The option to have full arms is always appreciated, as was the ability to flick grabble objects to yourself via gravity-style glove. Comfort options are available for those who need it, as is the ability to play seated, but the game feels comfortable and movement slow enough that these should be options for most and not necessities. And finally, that brings us to Fun Factor and my final review. Wraith the Oblivion Afterlife is a murder mystery told in a ghost story that, while well, creepy and scary to some extent, attempts to be more than that. I appreciated that the game plays less on the psychological horror side of things and instead aims to tell a more traditional ghost story that relies less on jump scares and more on creating an engaging story and a creepy atmosphere. It doesn't always stick the landing for that though, but plays well and looks great in the headset, making it still worth your attention. As you guys know, I hate numbered review scores and instead rate games on a basis of buy it, burn it, or wait on it. 
Horror game fans that simply love walking through haunted houses and investing in the lore, this is probably worth the asking price simply on its quality alone and your appetite for this type of content. If you like games such as Paranormal Activity, Don't Knock Twice, The Blair Witch, and Layers of Fear, this is sure to satisfy. I don't think you will find it as scary as most of those, but it might be more engaging narratively. For those who don't fancy walking around a haunted house, there simply isn't enough gameplay depth here or variety to keep you occupied beyond cleaning your diapers. So, maybe pass on this one or at least wait for a sale before treading in. Anyways guys, that's it for me. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing. As always guys, thanks for supporting the channel and I'll catch you on my next video.